Hey, I'm Scotty T from your Comedy Minute. I should have checked beforehand. Anthony Crescenzo, is that right? Yeah, that's right, Scott. Did I say did I say it right? I think so, yeah. It's like Anthony Crescendo, Crescenzo except with a Z, except the D, yeah. Yeah, it's because you said I saw an interview Crescendo. Yeah, so I think I did it right. I think you did too. A lot of people uh they, like I look at it this it way. Was, if you get it close enough. Yeah, I, my biggest thing is just get the right person, and the name is <laughs> inconsequential. You could spell Kevin Hart's name wrong as long as everybody knows who you're talking about. You know what I mean? Anthony, like, you're, Dwayne you're, the Croc Johnson. Okay, I know who he's talking about. Anthony, though. you're a comedian, a writer, an actor. I don't know where to begin. Do you do plumbing and electrical work too, or just is it just the comedy and the? Occasionally, I'll do plumbing in my own house and electrical. <laughs> Uh, when a comedy club needs uh, needs a couple extra laughs, I'll just go I in just, there and get I electrocuted. I heard a rumor. What was your first gig like? First, well, let's let's start at the beginning. When did you first start doing comedy? Oh my god! All right, this is a weird question because I I know that we never talked about this, so you don't know the answer. We, at all. We've never met. Tell people we've yeah. never met just till two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I started, I I, I was working in a, in a parking lot as a valet. Okay. For Rascal's Comedy Club. And I just wanted to be a hardcore singer. You guys, you know what that means, right? Just the guys are like... Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Couldn't get into a band because I couldn't get people around me. Okay. But I was parking cars over there, and apparently I was just making fun of whoever was giving me the keys to their car. And eventually, a couple of the headliners were giving me big money. They were giving them like $100, and I had no idea who they were. Right. And I would just say crazy crap, and I'd be waiting for them for like two hours after the show, and be like, right, "Oh, I'm right. so sorry. Here's a hundred bucks." And then Wendy Liebman and um, Doug Stanhope wound up giving me big ass tips, and Doug they were Stanhope. like, "You I should be Stanhope. inside instead." Okay. And I was like, "Okay." And they're like, "Here's the guy's name. It's Ed, and Eric is his assistant. Go talk to them. You should be working inside." And I was like, "Do you have cars inside too?" <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, keep going. So keep they told going. me, like, all right, this is what you're going to do. Uh, they didn't even say to go to a class. They were like, all right, this is funny. Uh, go to a couple of mics. Uh, this guy's going to work with you. And uh, I have not gotten a $100 tip since. Uh, okay. But they good, right? No, well, no, that's a great story. What was your first gig like, the very first time you stood up on the stage? Oh, it was terrible. My first stand-up gig, it was awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I I had a whole man that place made so much money off of me. You should never be drinking an entire case of beer before you go on stage, <laughs> especially if you're the third comic. <laughs> that shouldn't be a thing that happened. Okay. I had no idea what the light was. Nobody told me anything about like you only got five minutes. This is the light when we do this. That means you're done. Wrap it up. I just kept going, and they were like, "You were up there for twenty five minutes," and I was like cool and they're like you're supposed to be up there for five i was like does that mean that i get paid more they're like you don't get paid i'm like oh okay like speaking of which you owe me five bucks i'm like all right so that was that was the first gig yeah, you have a, a, a fan, because you've been doing it now for for how long oh i'd say on and off probably about 13 15 to 17 years okay so now do you have a favorite gig? That was probably your least favorite gig, or you know, least fa or that was your your least favorite gig. Do you have a favorite gig that you've done? Uh, every time I'm on the road, honestly, like that's for, for me, that's real. Every time I'm on the road, I love those. When I don't know anybody, and they are just oh, willing yeah. to play along with this stupid magic trick that I call telling jokes. Ah, oh, it's great. I can tell you the exact same thing I told that guy over there and the guy beforehand and yeah. the woman in the trailer park and everybody laughs at the exact same things because they've never heard it before. But if I come if I come to your house twice in a month, yeah. you're going to be like, I, I just heard these jokes. You got anything else? I'm like, do you ask Leonard Skinner to bring in new songs every time he comes in? <laughs> and I, yeah, I know I, Leonard Skinner is not one person, but I, I skipped. I skipped over that part. You're in New Jersey, right? You were born. In, were you born and raised in New Jersey? I was. I only spent one year out of Jersey, and it was in New okay. York, and what, it was the most know, expensive experience of my life. I, I got to say this because, and you again, we just met. 
I was in the music business and I was working for a different company, like say RCA, RCA records and I'd be pushing Dave Matthews or ZZ top. And I always had the most fun when I was where nobody knew me because I knew I could oh, yeah. act up. If I was in Wheeling, West Virginia, I didn't know one soul in Wheeling, West Virginia. I knew I could act the hell up. Oh yeah, no, it's the best. I, I talk crap about Erie, Pennsylvania all the time, but it's one of my Erie. favorite places to go. Oh my god, Erie's... Erie, Pennsylvania. Chew we Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania is the best. Like they don't even know that they have crappy weather over there. They're amazing. <laughs> Every time I go over there, I come back with a bunch of great stories. And they have no idea that people are talking. They're like, it's the weather over here, <laughs> it's just lake effect snow. I'm like, lake effect snow is not cause a fifty two car pile up that winds up on USA today. <laughs> you guys have crap weather. Well, you know, it's it, you wouldn't believe this because we've never met. But I met a girl named Susan Leftwich from Erie, Pennsylvania, and her birthday was on Halloween. Really? I can't make that shit up that good. <laughs> well, let's well Leftwich on Halloween, that is different. That, 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 from that, Erie, that, that Erie, Pennsylvania, from Erie. Anyway, let's move back to uh, besides doing comedy. Mm hmm. You're an actor. You've been on some shows, and, and there's a couple jump out at me. You're on Wendy Williams, but I married at first sight, and um, Cobra Kai. Yeah. But before we get to Cobra Kai, I want to hear about Married at First Sight. I'm I'm curious uh, about that one. A lot of people uh, wind up getting curious about that one. All right, so this was way before I met my wife. Years before I met her. All right. Um. Which I I had a really good time. I didn't know what to expect. I just knew it was a reality show. And I watched I, I watched an episode or two of it. I, I I thought it was funny as hell. Yeah, I I I enjoyed the show the very few times that I saw it, but I right. I can't watch too much of it because then there would be a girl, and that's not because for me. Then I would be a girl. <laughs> I'm just. I, I always said I, I watched an episode or two. I watched it no, for I mean, the train wreck. I watched no, it for it, the train wreck, my friend. I, I thought I, I thought they did a really good job with the show, but uh, um, they they had me on just so they could have me say dumb crap in front of the camera and then kick me off. At one point, they just they threw everyone out of the room, and they're like, "I was like, oh, is, what, what's wrong?" And they're like, "Nothing. We can't have the rest of the production staff laughing." Because we can't use the tape. Can you say exactly what you just said again? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then they just, I was like, so am I getting picked for the show? Is that what this means? Like, oh, absolutely not. You're, you're done after today. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it's a good thing that so, so I didn't get picked. Were, because you I had a girlfriend act- at the time and she wasn't happy. You were never actually on the show. I was on episode 00, the loser's edition. Are you serious? Yep. If you go to their um to their casting episode for okay. uh, uh, for season one, that's where I am. I'll, I'll have to watch for it. Now let's go on to Cobra Kai because you said you had a good story about that. Oh yeah, all right. So was I did, it season uh, season six? Season six that's coming out. I think in uh, well by the time this comes out, I think that'll be out right around the same time. Okay. Uh, so I wound up uh, getting picked to go over there to Atlanta and shoot that, and I was all excited about it. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna, I got these lines. Let's go. It'll be awesome. This is right. something I grew up with because this is Karate Kid, and I always get told that I look just like Ralph Macho when he was about the same right. age. So I go over there and I see him, and he's like, we're in a scene together. I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome. So I walk right up to him because I'm an idiot. And I was like, hey, Ralph, my name's Anthony Crescenzo. I'm a stand-up comic from New Jersey, uh, just like you. And I'm, you know, I, I'm trying to be an actor like you. Uh, you got any advice for me? He goes, uh, hey, Anthony, nice to meet you. Uh, they say you look like me. I'm like, yeah. He goes, you know what else you look like? One of the extras. Don't you belong over there? I'm like, <laughs> did he really, did so he really up going say to the that? Line. What? Did he, did he really say that? He said something like that, but I was so nervous that I don't really remember the exact line. But it was like, ah. <laughs> it's like walked away. I'm like, I don't mean okay. No, I don't mean to laugh. I've been I've been in those situations. 
All right. The better one was uh, Johnny wound up. T- I I got like so nervous and bored. I was right. laying on the mat and everybody's doing all these karate moves. Right. And I'm in my 40s, but everybody else there is like in their teens. Right. So I'm trying to do the moves with the kids. And I'm like jumping up and down on the mat. And I'm like, oh my God, this hurts so much. Because we're on the mat for like 12 hours straight. So I start doing yoga poses. And at one point I'm trying to do happy baby. Do you know what happy baby is? No, no, no. I haven't. Um, it's this weird thing where you get on your back and you take your legs and put them over here. And you're holding yourself like this. Okay. And you just turn around. <laughs> And I'm, everybody's like, what are you doing? I'm like, happy baby. And like, you're not reaching. It goes, sad baby, angry baby. Happy baby, sad baby, angry baby. And Johnny turns around and he goes, you keep doing that, you're going to be a hurt baby. What's wrong with you? He goes, we don't have oh, that kind great. of insurance. Relax. Okay, let's so keep I was like, moving. I do. Let's keep moving. We got a lot to cover. You're a writer. Yep. You're a writer. Tell the people about that. Oh, uh, well, right now I'm just writing for one magazine, uh, Fairfield right. Family and Friends. They've had me on since their inception. Okay. Uh, hopefully, the more they grow, the more I get to right. do with them. And honestly, I'm just a comedy writer for them. They have, like, real writers that do serious things that will probably win right. Pulitzer Prizes. And then the guy who writes dick jokes for families. I, I wish I could write and read. Uh, you have a U- uh, yeah. our, our special on YouTube, and you got a new... Yep. Uh, a new thing that you're excited about, uh, being the petite. Yeah. Which I watched uh, your latest episode, and I thought it was really cool. Thank you. No, I really yeah, did. Being, I thought it was really cool. Being petite, uh, being the petite is a, uh, it's essentially a, a road comic uh, yeah. horror story where, you know, every week we're going to like a different place, and yeah, yeah. I usually have my openers on there too, and if I'm opening for somebody else, I I'm very admissible about. You know, I'm working with these guys or these guys are opening for me tonight. Or a lot of times it's just guys that come down to my open mics and I'll, you know, throw them on for a couple of minutes. And it's fun. You know, we talk about like the uh, the location for that. We shoot a little bit of yeah. um, wherever we're going to go. Some stupid stuff that happens to the car. Some things that happen at the hotels and the Airbnbs. It's fun. And the, the way we got the name is I'm a big wrestling fan. So. If I hope I don't, I don't get in trouble for this, but being the petite, it's Jim Cornette was calling all elite wrestling all petite wrestling, and their their thing is uh, being the petite. And I was like, all right, you know what? No one's got that right, so put that together. Mm-hmm. No, and, and I got to tell you, it, that was what I really liked about it. Uh, at least I think it was the latest episode. You know, you showed the club. You know, you showed you get into the club and then inside the club and then when the club was full and what it was like. And it's just a behind the scenes look at what you, you know, as a comedian and what your guys go through. And, and you know, th- then there's pieces of the clips. It's I just really liked it. Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to try and try and help out with that YouTube channel because that's it's really cool stuff. I we'll love it. I love it. I love it. Um you also have an open mic that you sponsor or, or do whatever in New Jersey, the Boulevard, New Jersey. Is that right? Yeah, the Boulevard Bar and Grill is in Elmwood Park, New Jersey. It's right next to Patterson. So after the gunshots, there's another town, and that would be Elmwood Park. So you go over there and come down on Monday night. Sometimes we get uh, traveling comics. We get comics from New York down there, and it's like a lot of Jersey comics for the most part. And we've been going for like six years. People have a good time. We don't pay to get on stage over there. We we want people to drink. We just constantly mention that we're, you know, oh, we're sponsored by Ghost Talk Brewery, by right, Ghost Talk right. Beer, or, you know, they're not here anymore, so buy Hackensack Beer, or get anything you want to hear, drink off the bartender. Patterson. And everybody has a good time. I've been, to, I've been to Patterson, New Jersey. Really? Yeah. How much did that hooker cost you? Uh, I was going to say... Let's go back to Susan Leftwich from Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to ask you, my friend, the pinball shirt. What what is that about? I I don't I have no clue. Oh, pinball! That's uh, my special. We did it now we're over in uh, Newark, New Jersey, and okay. uh, pinball. The reason we called it that was because I'm very, very all over the place. I have ADHD. And I go from one subject matter to another subject matter. It's not always just the crowd work. It's just I'm way all over the place. There's actually a joke in my old home club. It's like, oh, yeah, the pinball over there. Wife on the pinball. Because we have no idea what he's going to do. 
Like one day he's talking about homelessness and then like he goes up for his second set and he's just talking about how he's going to be a good dad one day. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> I I watched you work in the crowd one time and you were just going from person to person to person just just nailing them. Well, I, I have to ask yeah. because I have to ask this just because you shared it with me. You're you're gonna be a new dad. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, my uh, my daughter should be born relatively soon. Um actually uh my my wife is like somewhere in this town that um that I, okay. I think a yacht club or something. <laughs> She's like, well, hey, go hang out in the parking lot while I go to a party. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah, see, I, I was going to ask you, you said your daughter, if there was a gender reveal party. Oh, yeah. The, the gender reveal was uh, I shot out and I was like, okay, it's a girl. All right. Okay. Okay. I went, you know, you know what happened to me. I went to the gender reveal party. Really? What happened? I pulled my pants down and I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Wait a minute, officer. <laughs> I thought you knew that one. That's an old one. Um, well, my friend, I listen. I I don't want to. I don't want to belabor the point. I've, I've had so much fun, and you're such a talented guy. Thank you. Uh, what What do you Stay have coming? What do you have coming up? And and, and again, I, you know, I'll try and get this on the air as quick as I can for you. Sure. Uh, let's see. The next things I have going on um, are. Really, just uh, every week we're still going to be doing uh, Boulevard and Emma Park. That'll be like the nine o'clock mic over there every Monday until we finally get kicked out of there or they bulldoze the place down, which will probably never happen. Um, <laughs> and uh, then the other one is uh, being the petite. As soon as uh, as soon as my daughter's born, I'll go back on the road and uh, we'll be shooting new episodes. So anybody that you know, if you happen to be watching it anyway, and you send me a comment on whatever it is and be like hey i'd also like to jump on be like okay i may or may not have time to actually put you on stage but I'm like you know what come down and we'll just we'll have oh, a conversation and i'll put it on the absolutely. podcast anyway what's it gonna hurt that's like what i'm doing man i don't have to do this exactly. I'm, you know, I'm solid uh, i before this do you know helene witt yeah helene was on right before you i just got done doing helene this morning really he's a huge Her boyfriend must be pissed She's a huge Beatles fan. Yeah, I know. We could have talked for hours because I had some Beatles stuff, and but uh, no, I mean I'm I'm in the same boat. I'm just trying to have fun and make people laugh and bring joy to people. And you know, kudos to you for doing that. I mean, I'm I'm thank you. Yeah, and and um, I wish you and your wife and your new daughter all the best. Thanks. But. Uh, do you want to do a bit or two? Do you have a little something that you can throw out at me before we get to your comedy minute? Do you have anything at all that, you know, to amuse the folks? Because I'm just speechless. You've um, done, you've done so much. You've done so much. You know, we didn't talk about Wendy Williams, but I think she's pretty much batshit crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was that's something like, I said yesterday, like and this is, this is really weird to me. Okay. Um, this isn't a part of, like, my normal stand-up. I I happen to talk about this last night for a okay. few seconds. I've never seen this before. I walked out of my mom's house and it had just like rained. It was like a hard storm, but it was only for like 10 minutes. And you've seen a rainbow before, right? Sure. You ever see a really hard rainbow? And then there's like a second one yeah. right on top of it. So the other day, I walked out of my mom's house and it was like right after a storm. And my wife goes, there's a rainbow. And I look up and I go, it's a double rainbow. And she looks at me, she's like, Happy Pride Month. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, it is. I was like, it's like two okay, guys up in the sky. <laughs> that's great. That's a great voice. Great Irish. Yeah, stuff. that's that's a lot of what I do now is uh, I like to do the voices because not just for my daughter, which I'm expecting to do, but just in general. Yeah. It's fun for me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I do a few voices. I <laughs> I'll do a little Archie Bunker. <laughs> really? I yeah. can see that. Yeah, I Let's do a little Archie it. Bunker. I, I can do... How about I do I do an impression for you first? That's what I want to hear. I'll do an Elvis impression. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
What do you think? <laughs> oh, Jesus, the, there he is. Go the Listen there, meathead. You come from a long line of bowling teams. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but you are one dumb Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Well, my friend, I, I, I want to let you go, but if you can, before you go, your comedy minute. Do you, do, you, do you think you can pull something out of your hat for that for me? Sure. Uh, let's see. You can, I'll, hey, be I'll tell you what. Some since of the you have, hang on, before you start, since you said you have ADHD and, and you know, you may do two. Do two. You get double bonus. <laughs> you can be like two different personalities, like Sybil. You can do two. Yeah. Anthony Crescenzo. Oh, okay. Anthony Crescenzo, your comedy minute. Go ahead, buddy. Have at it. Two uh, of awesome. Them. Two of them. Two of them. All right. So one, I do have ADHD. Um, had since I was little. I also have. Um, I'm also deaf in one of my ears. I, I no one I ever realizes that. it, but yeah, I have men. I had meningitis when I was little. Uh, I was never vaccinated for it. Not that my parents are not anti-vaxxers, but they're Italian immigrants, so they couldn't pronounce meningitis. But I got I got vaccinated for polio because that ends in a vowel. It right. was really nice. She's, they're such good people. I was gonna say she, but there's there's a guy and a girl. Uh, that's how I was made. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's an amazing situation. <laughs> and ADHD, we we have we have a lot of problems. No one realizes this, but the symptoms of ADHD it's the exact same symptoms as a coffee addiction. You know, you know what I mean. Sure. Like the more money you spend on a cup of coffee, the less service you get with it. You ever notice that? Because I go to this place, it's called Joe's Bagel Shop. They give me bagel, coffee, dollar five, no no tip jar, cream and sugar, no tip jar. But then Lupo at Starbucks, the guy charged me like ten dollars, ten, ten dollars for a cup of coffee, no bagel. And, and, and then he tells me to walk. Walk, go ahead, walk, walk. To the other side of the store for the cream and sugar. I stole his tip jar. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> I went back to Joe's. I go right. I go get my bagel, and I gave him a tip. Bagel, buddy. The kids' tuition, community college, should pay for a pencil. I'm not really sure. That's great. That's great. I love it. And you know what? I think there's probably a little truth mixed in there. A lot of, a lot of truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that honestly, Anthony, I think that's where the real, for me anyway, the real good humor comes from is when it's something that happens. Like for me, I'll give you just one quick one and I'll let you go. Sure. And I think you can relate. And that's why I think also, also if it's real relatable, I was on with like Comcast or one direct TV or dish network. Representative, oh, representative oh, got hold the line. <laughs> you know, for, Jesus Christ, they hung up on me. And you know, goddamn it, representative, get me a goddamn. You know, I'm hollering at the phone, and that I did a bit on that. And I was like, you know, that, and it was. I still think it's one of my best bits, just because, you know, it happened. It's real. I can see it. <laughs> oh yeah, my temper gets flaring like a pack of hemorrhoids. I. I I'm telling you. Well, buddy, listen, unless you got something else, I'm going to stop the recording. We can talk a little bit off the air. Yeah, that sounds good. Did you have a good time? I did. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. And listen, let's make a pact. We'll get, you know, we'll get together. We'll do it again, maybe around the holidays. I like that. Sounds good to All me. Right. Hang on. I'm going to stop the recording.